What's up, guys? It's your boys, Awoki, back with, of course, more of the Chris Watts and Nicole Kessinger videos. Uh, viewer had sent me this saying I needed to watch this because obviously we've questioned the security photos, the video, um, the Vivint security system, and so forth galore. Obviously, how many different times that uh, Chris Watts was probably manipulating the Vivint um, security system. He obviously knew more uh, Nicole Kessinger knew way more than she put off. And uh, apparently this is going to clear some of this up. Um, it's from a YouTube channel that I don't think I've ever watched. Um, it's from a Lucy Harrelson. Um, she's at 6,000 subscribers. So go give her some love, subscribe, comment, like, and share. She didn't post too long ago, but she posted one about a month ago. So she's still somewhat, um, current but definitely go give her some love because apparently this video is absolutely crushing in this case so before we go any further like i said go subscribe comment like and share on her channel watch your old stuff watch your new stuff you know the deal but on my channel don't forget to subscribe by hitting that wiper icon down at the bottom right hit that bell icon next to it so when i do post videos like this one you guys will get that little ring notification that i've posted that video and then you guys can watch comment like and share and again i'm so blessed to have all of you guys and thankful i can't like the words I, I can't give you because it's such a blessing to have all of you guys and i can't wait to see what the future holds for the channel with that being said let's get into the video all right guys we're not going to have any audio again because the music is copyrighted so we're going to not add the the audio in here i will commentate on what we see here so starting off the bat unanswered questions chris watts sat down with law enforcement officers tammy lee and graham coder dave Baumhover on february 18th 2019 this one wanted to see it was actually in prison so looking at it march 7th is chris watts gonna tell the truth um, Chris Watts, obviously inmate visitation history. We see uh, Dave Baumhover. We see Coder Graham and we see Tammy Lee as well. Is Chris going to be honest this time? Probably not. This man it just spits out a whole bunch of lies and crap and so forth like that. So um, March 7th, the audio and transcript of the conversation will be released. Obviously, we've seen that and so forth like that before, but let's continue. So we're going to start seeing some footage here of obviously the security system and um, the security footage from Nate and so forth like that, which has been slowed down and all that, all that jazz. Will we finally learn how and where the girls died? Can Chris word be trusted? No. I still feel the, the girls were unfortunately removed from this world in or at survey 319. I don't believe that he did it once at the house and then did it a second time. We talked about the theory possibility of him doing it once at the house, but then Nicole possibly finishing it at survey 319. It's just a theory, entertainment, educational purposes only and research purposes. Um, I just don't think that's a theory to go with. Uh, because they didn't have any bruising uh, on their autopsy reports when it came to the eyes and so forth. So I believe this is where Shanann was carried to the truck. He looks like he's struggling. I don't know if he looks like he's struggling. I've definitely watched this over a whole bunch of times. I don't feel like I see it. Watching the shadow. You really don't see him. I just don't see it. If he carried her out the front with a bag on her head, a bag on her feet, and then sheet wrapped around her, you cannot tell me no one's going to be like, hey, oh, oh, what are you doing? Like, you cannot tell me that. Now the girls, when did they come out? Were they still alive? We see the little um, shadow of one, but I think that was either, Be I think that was Bella. Five minutes before Chris leaves, he loads two last things in the truck. The girls. Now look at the shadow. Looking at the shadow. He is loading something into the driver's side door, and about 20 seconds later, another figure approaches him. So he came out with one daughter, 
which was probably Celeste. And then Bella comes running. Now look at the shadow. Boop. I think that was Celeste. Or that was um Bella. One child being put into the driver's side of the truck. Can't say 100% on this one. But I do believe that this is one of the children. Yes, I believe 100% certainty on that one too. I think it's Bella. Um, because Bella is more up to listening. Where CC would just be more of a kind of like kind of thing um the child almost appeared to be running and then is swooped up by chris from behind was this bella did she realize her daddy was no longer her hero i don't think at this instant she thought she was just going to help mommy get better because chris said mommy's not feeling good unfortunately is what she led to believe thought was the answer Watching, watching. There's the shadow. I just wish this was more, better lighting and better quality. I have no doubt about this shadow. I can clearly see the child walk up to her dad and then he picks her up. He then puts her in the truck on the driver's side. He probably asked her to jump into the back of the, the vehicle. Or it looks like she's being picked up. Or she's being picked up, but she's being dropped in the seat behind him and I wish this bush wasn't in the way I'm really trying to watch it here she definitely really slowed this down oh then he goes Oh, I wish there was a camera on the other side. And you can't tell me that ring camera was not on. What triggered Nate's security footage? The foot footage starts before Chris exits the garage, which is very interesting because like he said, the camera only goes off by motion. Okay. So he's already, this camera is already recording. So what made it go off? The footage starts before Chris exit the garage. Why did it start recording? Did somebody come in? I feel like I've watched this so many times. I still am finding new things. Was Chris manipulating the Vivint data? Yes, I believe. How did he keep Shanann from seeing Nicole or Kessinger enter the home? That's a big statement because I don't know if she was there or not because we don't know. But again, the Vivian system that he said was downstairs in the basement didn't have any sensors in the basement. But then there was that sensor in the white corner or the, the corner that had the little white piece. But he said that on the opposite side of the basement where the windows were did not have a sensor. So she could have been in down there for all we know. She could have turned off the Vivint system because he had mentioned too that the windows weren't actually even locked. All you had to do was like, boop, flip something and you were able to enter the home. So she could have gone through the home, through the windows of the basement, hid out in the basement the entire time until a code name or something like that, that Chris mentioned <clears throat> and she came up. She could have turned off the Vivint system through underneath the stairs. All you had to do was crawl underneath the stairs where that little area was, which I might, in fact, the dog's alerted to. And all she had to do was unplug the Vivint system. It would have been all lights out. I'm so frustrated because it just, we, we know as a community of this case that Kessinger was involved in some shape or form. Again, like we said before, we can't tell if it was physical, mental that she did it with Chris or emotionally on him. But again, I'm not giving any excuse for Chris what he did. I'm just saying Nicole helped some way, shape or form. So at 1852, so that's 652, uh, after Shanann told Watts to call Vivint before I flip. 
Watts advised they are sending a sensor for the garage door. I tried moving it like they said, and it didn't work. When did this happen? Hold, hold on. Watts called Vivint and held a 20 minute conversation. He entered Vivint into his, account, or his contract or pff, contacts following the call. But when was this? What day was this? Immediately after Watts called Vivint briefly at 1716, Watts called Vivint a second time and held another 25 minute conversation. Watts called Vivint and held a 10 minute conversation. And then at 1739 and 1749, Shanann asked Watts, Chris Watts, what they said. Although his call with Vivint ended nearly 30 minutes earlier, Watts responded he was still on the phone. Resetting settings and sensitivity should be good now. I will mon monitor it. I bet he monitored it very well to benefit him. This is very interesting. I don't remember seeing any of this in the discovery. It could have been something that I overlooked too. I mean, there's 2000 pages. Come on. How did she get in and out without being seen by neighbors and camera? The back. That's why I'm telling you the back. Was she sneaking in the back? Why was Chris parking the Lexus down the road to throw this off? I'm telling you there's something with this woman. Oh, okay. So the, or the question was something I asked you about, um, cause you've been there twice. It just made me remember. Do you remember how you guys accessed the house or how you guys accessed the house? Answer. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, so once through the garage, I think once through the front door. Okay. Question. Uh, answer. I think the first time was through the front door. I think. And then I think the second time was through the garage. There's a lot of I thinks here. Question. Is there anything unique about either of the doors when you went into the house that might not be typical of another house? Answer from Chris Watts. Like a unique door? I know they have a question. Not the door itself. Answer. Camera. On their door? Question. Okay, there's there's answer. I mean, I know that. Question. There's a camera on the which door? Answer. I. It's on the front door, isn't it? Is he asking a question of the place that he knows? Question. Um, I don't know. I'm asking you. And he goes, answer. I think so. What? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, so. Oh, this is with Nicole. Once through the garage. And I think once through the front door. Here, I thought this was Chris. How did no one see her during the six weeks? Shanann was gone. Was she sneaking in the back? Why was Chris parking the Lexus down the street? I'm telling you. I think you. the first time was through the front door, I think. And I think the second. Of course, the whole I think is Nicole Kessinger. I should have seen it coming. Second time was through the garage. Was there anything unique about either of the doors when you went into the house that might not be typical of another house? Like a unique door? Like, not I know the they door have a itself. camera on their door. Okay, I mean, there's, I know there's a that. camera on the, which door? I, it's on the front door, isn't it? Um, I don't know. I'm asking. I think you. so. Oh. Where is Shanann's clothes? She was last seen in. Where are the girls' stuffed animals? I can tell you the blankets and the stuffed animals were thrown away. Okay. Where is Shanann's clothes? I think they were inside the laundry room. <sighs> Have police found these items? So. The blanket, the blanket, and the stuffed animal were all put into the trash bin. 
the clothes, I'm not so sure where they went. Um, of shenanigans, we can't really find that out on that aspect. Nicole and Chris is missing phone data. Nope, can't use the audio. Okay. Nope. Okay. The device, that, which was the app roll we've seen before, the device is devoid of any calls, messages, photographs, or videos involving the Watts. There is no listing for Watts. Wait, what? Nor even his number in the device's contact list. All signs of Chris Watts are deleted. Oh, okay. That's what it meant. I was like, what? wait, wait, what are we talking about? The number of text messages recovered and found in both phones don't add up. They either had other phones or were very good of getting rid of them. Did the police recover? Well, that one person said that we weren't able to recover all of the information. They said we were able to get a good amount, but not all of it. Did they really only know each for a couple of months? Hell no. There is no way that you fall over head over heels in six weeks. I'm telling you, I mean... Don't get me wrong. Us guys, we can fall hard in love fast. But I would never murder my family for anyone. So I'm just trying to figure out. This is so frustrating. Okay, so we got, what is this, emails? Okay, this is Nicole speaking. I spoke with my gas monitor vendor regarding your app access. Our account has been reset. Please continue to use the same credentials you were provided upon receiving your unit. Let me know if you could continue or if you continue to have issues or require any further assist or anything further. Best regards. And a Darko. Thanks, Nikki. Have a great rest of your day. <laughs> Thank you for being honest with me this morning. Truthfulness is so underrated in our culture. Now, again, I've said this before. I think these emails were to show us a time frame that they wanted us to believe. They wanted us to show that around June 12th and so forth, that's when they started getting to really start talking. When they were researching each other, well, Nicole was researching each other way before then, but then Chris started doing it. And then she started looking into Shanann and all that stuff. So for those that haven't read the emails, I'm going to continue reading the emails. I am a straightforward guy. No, you're not. Lying just complicates things. You're the biggest liar that we've ever probably seen. I think you're absolutely stunning. And from what I've learned about you so far, you seem like an amazing person. Sir, you're married with two kids and one on the way. I hope to continue to get to know you better since we have a lot in common. Gross. You should be worrying about your wife and your beautiful kids. Okay. Okay. So Nicole says, Chris, agreed. It is very nice to find people you can relate to. I enjoy talking to you as well. I feel understood. Hee hee hee. Shut up. I am looking for someone to build a beautiful life with. Why would you start that off? He literally said, I'd like to get to know you. Like, I, why would she sit there and say, I'm looking for someone to build a, li- a beautiful life with? Why would you say that? Seems so simple, but is so unrealistic at time or so, sometimes. Building something similar to what you have done with your wife and those cute little girls. Aha! She knew that they were not separating at this moment. She doesn't say anything about the baby, but again, we've we've known that because she said, "I want to give you your firstborn son." So right here shows us at tw- June twelfth, she knew that they were still together. Again, we already know that she was Googling them, Facebooking them, and so like that. She knows about it, but this is just another nail in the coffin to make sure that she hopefully gets it. I do believe in karma. Well, guess what? Karma's coming back for you at some point in time. So out of my respect for myself, you and your family, I think it's best if we keep that friendship at work. Again, this is put 
before anything happens to show this is where they want us to believe that Nicole was not in love with Chris. But again, I find this very ironically condescending. Is that what I want to be? Is that what I want to say? Um, by the way, I keep the conversations we have between us. Aha! Secrets. I just, I feel like these emails are just a complete waste of time because they're trying to let, let us believe that this is when they were talking. Oh, okay, here we go. Nikki. Yes, a beautiful life is something that is hard to find in this world since people always seem to have an agenda for everything. Are you not going to talk about your wife? I do believe in karma, so I agree with you that as well. Well, karma came back for you tenfold, my sir, or my good sir. Um, any conversations we have will stay between us. No need to worry there. My work number is this. If you need to get a hold of me in the field, sometimes email can be tricky. With the spotty service out here, I have an early morning meeting and then I'm done. L O T O for a construction crew on various sites all day. So if I don't see you tomorrow, I hope you have an amazing day. You know what I want to do? This is Chris. Shut up. Because you should not be cheating. Oh. Okay. See the next BS email. Okay, what is this? Okay, search the internet for Shanann Watts a year before the murders. I might add again. Why is she searching for Shanann back in September of 2017? Did she know Shanann before she know Chris? What is going on here? There's possibility that everybody's thought too, or not everybody, but some people have thought that they met at a gym um, because Chris was going to the gym and so forth like that. And then Shanann wanted him to be more home, which I understand, um, which I would want to work out at home anyways, because sometimes the gyms can be smelly and all that stuff. But I think that they could have met at a gym as well. And then she got somehow got herself into Anna Darko. Is this a typo? No, it was actually confirmed. Well, can we believe it? Probably not. But it was confirmed by DA Rourke and other law enforcement that it was not a typo. So she actually searched them up a year prior and then six months prior, three months prior, two months prior, one month prior. Like she searched her up quite a bit. Okay. And then yet she's still walking free. That's what is ridiculous. <sighs> okay, what's next? Nicole Kessinger's phone. Again, the 111 minute phone call that they don't remember what. If you, I remember phone calls that I had for long nights with girls. I remember them and it's been years. Like we're talking 15 plus, okay? And I still remember those. I probably don't remember why I ate yesterday, but I can remember my conversations that I had with girls that I started dating. But again, she calls that morning at 6.16 a.m. where her phone pinged in Frederick, Colorado, where the only other two times that it pinged in Frederick, Colorado, or Frederick, Colorado, was when she was at Chris's house when Sh Nicole or Shanann was gone in North Carolina. And lo and behold, that phone call was a minute long to a phone number at Milwaukee, Wisconsin, who else had that Milwaukee, Wisconsin phone number? Jim. The murders, nothing important as Nikki says, or something more sinister. Why did Nicole's phone ping in Frederick, Colorado the morning of the murders at 616? She called the mysterious Jim. She probably called him and said, hey, it's done. We'll meet you at Survey 319. But yet you see that you see all the information in front of their faces for the law enforcement. And they're like, she's free. <clears throat> okay. Like I said before, the other times that she pinged here, I'm touching my screen. I don't know why. July 14th, Frederick, Colorado. She called to Fairville, New or North Carolina. Nicole's phone pings and Frederick around this time at the house when she was there. 
down at July 18th, it does it another tw two times because she called twice, one at 4.34 p.m. and one at 4.40 p.m. to a VM deposit and an incoming uh, or incoming at CL. And then the other time it pinged was the morning of the murders. These are the only other times that her phone pinged through July and August and Frederick the 14th. She was at the Watts home, according to her. What was she doing there so early in the morning, the day of the crime? Possibly helping. Covering up, cleaning up. You can't tell me she was not there. There's no way. And then there's some people that were like, oh, she was on her way to work. This is completely out of her way to go to work. Her house is here. Anna Darko's up here. The Watts house is down here. Nicole had a shorter distance to go to work than Chris did. So how the hell was she going to work? Going to work when she clocked in around three something in the afternoon, was there briefly to talk to her sex therapist that she called on the phone and then left? She has no alibi, but yet we're going to let her go. She is not a person of interest. The information is upon you in front of your face, law enforcement. And yet you let her go. Does Chris Watts use a purple face mask when he sleeps? If not, who does it belong to? I don't see Chris being that kind of guy that needs a face mask. And I don't think many guys use face masks. I'm not saying that guys don't, but again, what if Nicole was in the bed when she came home? It looks like it looks cutesy. Like it looks like a cutesy eye thing. Look, if you look on the pillow, that's another thing. Did they DNA swab the pillows? Did they see if there was any white substance? Did they see anything under the bed? Did they collect for hair follicles? Like, what are we doing here? The dog alerted to this area. Stop music. Did Chris throw up at survey 319? I think he did because he finally realized what he did. And he's like, Ugh, okay, now I got to figure out what I'm going to do. Like to clean it up. Is this where he killed the girls? I believe so. Look at the pink on the ground. The pink on the ground. Where are we looking? Oh, hold on. Where did she got this? Okay, so the pink on the ground. But where is this? Junctured to the tanks. I don't think I see it. Because I'm guessing this is zoomed in. Well, here's this rock. Here's this rock. I don't see. So you're telling me this and this pink stuff right here is throw up? Did they test it? Probably not. I don't see where it's at over here. If you guys see what I'm seeing. I'm trying to picture this somewhere through here, but I'm not seeing it. If you guys can see it, let me know in the comments. Interesting. Can Chris be trusted? No. In any way? No. Will he tell us the truth? Probably not. He'll just keep altering the truth and so forth like that going forward. About where he snuffed out Shanann's, Bella Celeste, and D Nico's lives. Subscribe and comment more below for Miss um, Lucy Harrelson. Make sure you guys go give her some love. You know the deal. Um, again, let me know down in the comments what you guys' partake is on this. I think, again, wholeheartedly, the whole... Vivint security system was completely tampered with. They knew where the, the sensors were. 
Um, even Chris was sending pictures to her to kind of see what she was feeling like. So maybe this whole thing with the Vivint security system was his way of testing the bads, the goods, the settings, the this and that. And he was able to get this under control so it would benefit him in this time of the murders. With that being said, let me know your guys' partake on this. Please hit the like button for the obvious reasons that, that hopefully one day these videos and all the YouTube channels and so forth like that that are trying to find the answers will make a difference. And again, don't forget to subscribe, share with your friends, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Please take care, be safe, and as always, keep nerding on, and we'll see you guys in the next video.